Okay, everybody, Super Jack's around here. Now on to episode 8 of Jack Talks, which we'll be reviewing another Christmas movie. This is a good one. It's based off the book written by Doctor Who sometime in, 50s, in the 50s. And it was also based off the sp a TV sp animated cartoon TV special that was released in 1966. And this is a remake, a live-action remake in 2000. It was uh, made by uh, Imagine Entertainment and released by Universal Pictures. It is none other than... Dr. Seuss is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This is the 2001 Collector's Edition DVD. I know there's also a 2003 Deluxe Edition DVD, which is in stores during the holidays, but this DVD's pretty, still pretty good. I know Mars 89 has this DVD, except his copy has the film in widescreen, while my copy has the film in full screen, but that's okay. Anyway, his spine. In the back, it says, Instant Glow, stated by J. Carr, the Boston Globe. Uh, that can make your heart grow three sizes if you're not laughing too harshly by Steve Murray of Land Journal Constitution, and... Holiday package that will ki that kids will embrace and parents will adore. Say by Phil Wunsch of da Dallas Morning News. It has quite a few bonus features, and this is one of the very few DVDs to actually have this DVS descriptive video service. Not only DVS had that, that special is pretty good. But between us and the cartoon, uh, 1960 special, I still think the cartoon version is way better than this version. But but this version is still pretty good. I like the cartoon film, uh, cartoon one a lot better. But this film is still pretty. But this film is still pretty good though. Not bad. It's still good. See, there's the DVD guy with 20 chapter selections, and here's the disc. Okay, I'm gonna get to, to reviewing the film. It begins in Who Whoville. Well, we see a bunch of snowflakes falling. Then a snowflake comes up. We go inside the snowflake, and this, and then uh, we enter Whoville. And Cindy Lou, whose role in this role is a lot larger than the book or in the special, so it's good for her to actually have a, a bigger role. Oh, and anyway, so the narrator is then saying the quote. Oh, like every Who down Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. And then uh, we see the Grinch's uh, mountain, and then four teenagers are come up there, and they're about to go up to the door, but then a monster comes out, 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 and scares them away. But then we realize the monster is actually not real, and that it's actually this uh, fate. Uh, this like robotic, like fake thing. We see uh, Max the dog behind it, and then the Grinch comes out of his uh, his home, and then he says, "So they want to get to know me, do they? They want to spend a little quality time with the Grinch." And then the Grinch turns around. We see what he looks like. And this has Jim Car and Jim Carrey plays the Grinch. So then him and Max enter Whoville, and then they go, and then uh, Cindy Lou Who and her father uh, uh, go to the post office because uh, her father's the post office man. And everybody's complaining that their mail. They got the, is mixed up, and then we find out the Grinch is behind the, uh, our, uh, mailbox, and then he's restoring mail, saying, like, this is hers, now it's his, this is his, now it's hers, hers, and then he gets a bunch of mail, and he's saying, jury duty, jury duty, blackmail, blackmail, pink slip, and then all the other stuff, and then Cindy Lou Who walks in, she finds the mask that the Grinch was wearing, of course, the Grinch is up on the ceiling, she doesn't see him, and then, uh, and then Max uh, sneezes, like there's a little thing that dogs do when they sneeze, and, and uh, Grinch said, Gesundheit, which is, we know, Gesundheit is bless you in German. And then Cindy Lou Who turns around and sees him, comes off the ceiling, and she says, you're the, 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 and then the Grinch says, the, 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 the Grinch. And then she falls down, goes, and is about to go into the sorting machine, but then the Grinch saves her. And then she says, thanks for saving me, and then he turns around saying, saving you? Is that what you think I was doing? She nods her head and she says, wrong. And he says, wrong -o. Uh, And then he wraps her up in a package. Of course, then we go back to, um, then we go to, um, and uh, the Grinch comes back to his home and we, s so we see what his home is like. So then he goes over to his bed, he goes over to his answering machine and we see hear a voice, like, I think it might be the voice of Tom Kenny because Tom Kenny, we know, he is, he does do the a voice on SpongeBob SquarePants because we know Tom Kenny, he does the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and he also voices Gary the Snail. He hears a message, and we hear a voice that sounds like SpongeBob's voice saying, You have no messages. And then he plays this other answering machine with somebody say, If you dare st stand one foot towards me, I'll hunt you down and cut you like a fish. <laughs> and then, uh, Cindy Lou Who then goes to these ladies the next day, and, like, the ladies are explaining why the Grinch, how, like, she, why the Grinch hated Christmas, how, like, he had a, when he was young, he had a crush on the woman, Martha May, Huvia, and had, like, he embarrassed himself one day on Christmas, so then he left Whoville and went up to the mountain, and has been there ever since. 
And then the Hoovalation comes, and we see all the people entering the Hoovalation saying, Hoovalation, Hoovalation, candy, cakes, and pie. I can't wait to get there to eat the Hoo pie. And then uh, everybody's there, and then uh, Cindy Lou Who nominates the Grinch for the award, but then uh, the mayor says that the Grinch will never come down, so then the Grinch, uh, so then, yeah, uh, Cindy Lou Who goes up to Mount Crumpet and goes to uh, get, uh, uh, find the Grinch. To, to invite the Grinch, so she goes up and she invites, and he invites the Grinch, and then, like, he says, he says he'll think about it, and then, uh, actually, he's saying, what, he, then he looks at his schedule, saying all this stuff, he says, oh, I'm booked, he says, well, maybe if I don't move that thing to nine o'clock, and then, he says, but what would I wear, and then, he tries on all a bunch of these clothes, he gets a, a, a little, uh, tablecloth, and he put, he, uh, goes over to a table and there's a cloth with a bunch of stuff above it. He grabs the cloth. Of course, none of the s stuff falls off, which is like basically like the magic trick. And then he walks over and knocks all the stuff off. And then he tries on, on it, but then he made it look like a dress. And then Mac sparks and then he sa says, it's not a dress, it's a kill. And he rips off the thing and he says, sicko. And then we, and then finally he says that he can't find anything to where he's not going. But then like he hears somebody yodeling, and we see someone with a yodeler. He has a king, he grabs the person yodeling, and he takes the person's outfit. And then he decides he leaves to go. At first, like, he's thinking about, okay, I'll go over there, or accept the award, grab a handful of popcorn trip, and then go out. Of course, I will be fashionably like, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes. And then he go. He arrives at the Hoovalation, he tries all this, uh, he tries all these, uh, Hoovalation things before he gets the award, which is, um, like he tries, I'm not saying he's an order because I don't know, I forgot the order. So there's who pudding, uh, fruitcake, uh, and, uh, fruitcake, and, uh, a few other stuff. Um, uh, stuff, and there's also a, uh, Kunga line, a Whoville Kunga line, also a, Beanbag race, and then he wins. He wins the award, but the award is the razor as a throwback to his childhood of how he started hating Christmas. So then, um, of course, then uh, the mayor then proposes to Martha May Huvier, and then he says if she wins, she'll get a new car. But and then uh, likely then the Grinch scratches up the car, and then he destroys the Huvelation. He like destroys the tree and, and wrecks everything. So now the Huvelation is destroyed. He goes back up to his mountain and he thinks of a way to stop Christmas. And then uh, he throws Max out in the snow, and then Max has like a bunch of snow on, making it look like a Santa Claus beard. So he got the idea, as narrator says. Then he got an idea, an awful idea. Uh, the Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. So then he goes. So then he makes a, a quick Santa outfit as the popular song "You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch." So then, she, and he's up there, of course. And then once the sled's all set, he heads down to Whoville. I eat. He heads to the first house, which is Cindy Lou Who's house. He's about he's taking everything. He's about to go up, take the tree up. But then Cindy Lou Who comes out. And she says, "Why are you taking our tree?" And he says the quote from the special and in the book: "There's a light down this tree that won't light, so I'm taking it back to my workshop. I'll fix it up there, and then I'll bring it. Oh, sorry. Bring it back here. Sorry if I just dropped it. So then she fo falls for that. So then he takes everyone's presents up to uh, everyone." His presence up to the mountain, so he's finally free. I think he got to it's up to the top, and he thinks that he did, thinking that everybody will now be upset. But honestly, he hears uh, when he goes down, he hears all the who's singing. Fa who forest, who Doris, welcome, Grant has come this way. So yeah, and then honestly, the Grinch sees Cindy Lou, who is right above him, him right above. Uh, Bat the, is big thing that has all the gifts and stuff. And of course, then automatically, somebody, uh, you know, likely the, the bag is about to fall. And then the Grinch, uh, Grinch's heart grows three sizes and he's able to lift up the bag. So then him and Cindy Lou Who head down back to the Who Vale. And then the, the, all the Who's spend the entire day, spent their entire Christmas in the Grinch's home. And he even cuts the roast piece. Okay, everybody, that's episode eight of Jack Talks, which next day. Episode 9 will be up next.